once again, this is Jonathan Kelly with the Live to Create Show. Today, I have my boy on here, Mr. DJ L Smooth. Yeah, the Ox producer himself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, man, um, tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell the people who you are, what you do. Okay. Well, I am a full-time DJ and producer. Um, I work with the city of Tallahassee as well, and I also do Forex trading. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, when did you know that you were, uh, weren't like everybody else? You thought a little bit differently. Um, you were a more creative individual. Um, probably whenever I was six or seven and I wanted to do music and dance more than play baseball. Mm -hmm. My dad was very heavy into sports. Um, mm -hmm. he went to school for baseball mm -hmm. and he really wanted me to like get more into it. And one day I just told him, I was like, man, a hey, baseball is your thing. I like music, <laughs> I like dance, and I mean, from that point on, he actually created a, a non-for-profit called Sports My Choice. Okay. And it was based off of that initial moment whenever I said, my choice is to do entertainment That's dope, music. man. Yeah. And, and I like how you said he didn't try to push it on you anymore. Mm -hmm. He kind of let you be your own person. Right. And do and do what you were passionate about. Exactly. Yeah. That's what's up, so That's man. probably the first moment that I realized that... I was different and I wanted to really create something for me that I enjoyed doing to make a way for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now tell me this. Why do you call yourself the entrepreneur? I think that's kind of clever how you yeah. mix producer and entrepreneur together. Right. You're the only person I've ever seen do that. I hope I've never seen anybody else do it. Yeah, I'm going to tell them, nah, hey, <laughs> hey, bro, you stole, you stole my boy's name. Exactly. Man, you know? It's only one. It's yeah, only I one. love it though. So tell me why uh, you call yourself that and what it mean? It actually happened whenever I was making a beat at my mom's house. I was like 17, mm -hmm. heavy into producing. And my mom came through and she just started singing this hook. Mm. And the hook was, entrepreneur. Yeah. And I was what? like, what? What is that? And she yeah. was like, I mean, you're not really an entrepreneur. You are an entrepreneur because you're making the beats and you 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 doing more with the yeah. beats than just making them. Right. You're trying to make a business out of it. Mm -hmm. So she definitely put that name. And I mean, that's really what it means to be yeah. an entrepreneur. But then you also producing more than just music. You're producing others who could also be entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. But now, being an, entre um, an entrepreneur and producer, what kind of obstacles have you run into, and then how, how have you had to overcome them? Man, uh, I've run into a lot of naysayers, mm -hmm. people yeah. who, you know, claim there's no music, I mean, no business in music, mm -hmm. and really, I would say, goodness, I, I, I've seen a lot of folks, you know, just downplay being a producer full-time mm -hmm. but being that i was so grounded in music from mm -hmm. being in band to making beats on the desk in class mm -hmm. um i just knew you know if timberland was able to do it if pharrell was able to do it why can't i so yeah. that just kept me you know focused on being a producer and actually making a living out of doing something with the beats that i create mm -hmm. because i've done remixes I've done where I would mix in some of my beats while I'm DJing, mm -hmm. and then I use that to my advantage because when you become a DJ, you have a platform now. Yep. You, you yep. have the audience, and I mean, I might slip in a beat that I made over a popular track and mix it to where you like, is this a remix? Like, mm -hmm. what is this? Yeah. It sounds yeah. so good. Yeah, so that's really where, where, where I found you know my niche mm -hmm. and really being able to use producing as... A way to to be more creative. Yeah, and, and I like that. Change. Yeah, you find a way to to put some of your stuff into what um, to what other people like. Right, and, and kind of mix it in, blend exactly. it in. All right. Um. So being that you were telling me that you recently have gotten engaged, you're about to get married soon. Yeah. How do you balance your work and um and personal life? Right. Okay. Well, that. first and foremost, gotta give a shout out to my babe Nivia. Y'all go <laughs> check out. Of course. We got some music coming soon. Oh yeah. Um, but really, getting married and and really being a producer, getting in a unit with a singer, a performer, mm -hmm. that's putting me in a mindset of full synchronization, mm. and so. Yeah we're going to be able to move with synergy mm -hmm. more than chemistry. 
Okay. We're going to have both in the studio, um, but it's, it's helping me just learn, okay, what works better for any artist that I create for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Any yeah. artist that I produce. Um, I've worked with several artists who are now, you know, in different cities mm -hmm. and they've actually grown from the stuff that I was teaching them mm -hmm. back in 2012, mm -hmm. 2011 mm -hmm. for being a producer. I would do more than just, you know, hit the button, hit record and be like, hey, that sounds good. I would right. actually produce yep. and make sure, you know, they're putting their best effort behind, you know, that verse that they're laying down and mm -hmm. stuff like that. I don't know if I'm on subject on oh track, no bro yeah. you're right you're right okay, that's yeah. good man uh well tell me this how do you mm -hmm. how do you define success in your in your words in my words i would say success is when you can enjoy life and you're not just existing mm -hmm. you're living okay and like and and it's more of your living in a happiness a sense of peace a sense of no stress um being successful is being debt free. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> being being unbothered with the I guess everyday hustle and bustle mm -hmm. of, you know, paycheck to paycheck, how right, am I gonna right. make ends meet, stuff like that. So whenever I, I, I agree with that. Yeah, whenever I hit that point, then I will truly feel like I've hit success. And that's just on the surface. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's deeper than that because when we get into getting a Grammy or getting nominated, mm -hmm. then it's like, people are like, oh, you done really hit success. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, nah, I've been successful because I'm doing what I love. Yep. And every day is just a challenge of, can I outdo myself from yesterday? Yeah. 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 That's good, man. Yeah, man. Um, what do you think your greatest attribute and strength is? My greatest attribute, I would say, is communication mm -hmm. and being a good leader. Okay. Also being an innovator. And I would say my weaknesses mm -hmm. would be punctual. Being punctual mm -hmm. for myself, um, a lot of times I find, you know, I'm late on things mm -hmm. that, not even in a sense of time-wise, but I'm just late on reaching a certain level that I want to be right. at. Yeah. Right. So that that's yeah. kind of what I would say my weakness. Um, also, I might you know get too emotional sometimes, um, and I ain't afraid to admit that. You know, no, that's right. Yeah, yeah, man, really. yeah. But you yeah, know, yeah, whenever yeah. you're putting your passion behind something like music, mm -hmm. you really get attached to it, and it becomes a part of you because it's your brainchild. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I would I would definitely say that's you know one of the weaknesses that I'm working on, just becoming more. Uh, less attached mm -hmm. in the sense of emotion, but then you know, whenever I'm producing or creating, I do make sure I put emotions in mm -hmm. my tracks. Yeah, yeah. lately, um, to speak on that, I've been trying to work on my emotional intelligence. That's mm -hmm. a that's a real thing that yeah. people don't understand. Yeah, like you know, how do you react or respond to certain things? That's right. emotional intelligence. Right. You know, how do you do you understand how you feel? Mm -hmm. Emotional intelligence. Exactly. You know, and that exactly. stuff can you know, people don't. That they don't talk about, it. right? They do never you, teach. Do you. you shut down right. in the moment, or do you try to talk through it? If you're an adult, I mean, if you if you're an adult and you're a grown person acting like a child, mm -hmm. you have very bad emotional intelligence. Exactly. You know stuff exactly. like that. Yeah, um, what are your What are some of your future goals and aspirations pertaining to like uh, business, entrepreneurship, um, uh, music, mm -hmm. and any other things that you're doing? My future goals, I would say, is to develop a non-for-profit mm -hmm. for kids who can learn how to DJ, learn how to produce, kind of come to a one-stop shop mm -hmm. and really excel in learning something that will help them in the future kind of mm -hmm. pay for stuff. Like okay. I'm working with a few DJs now who are under the age of 17 Okay, and they have, you know, their own equipment, but I'm putting together a team to where they're able to learn from their mistakes at an early age okay. and get that behind them as support, okay. as experience. Um, I think there was another, ask a question again. Mm -hmm. I think there was another. Oh, just future goals and aspirations with like your business okay. and music. So you told me about the music. Yeah, that was um, my music. What about business? Like um, we talked about like real estate oh, earlier. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So future... 
goals definitely for business i want to get invested with real estate mm -hmm. um and i also want to become a stronger um forex broker okay and just become you know more familiar with the whole mindset mm -hmm. of you know trading um learning from that and then with real estate want to definitely get into the business of airbnb ownership right, right. um management and really get into DJing more and have you know more time to mm -hmm. go on tours um, and really promote and push my brand, my power, my creativity, and mm -hmm. be able to kind of do festivals. Um, I've seen a lot of different DJs make a killing at different festivals mm -hmm. and they're only playing for maybe 45 minutes. Wow. Yeah, but they headlining and they're making like forty five thousand just from one show and I'm like, Man, That's crazy. Listen, yeah. yeah, so you get that big. Exactly. Yeah. It's like you become that household name and, and it's like you don't even have to say anything mm -hmm. on the track. Mm -hmm. But it's your production that mm -hmm. you made and then you go to these festivals and they pay X amount of dollars just to come hear you play just, some music. Just to have you there. Yeah. Yeah. If you could go back uh fifteen Mm -hmm. uh, to 20 years mm -hmm. and talk to the old Lewis and talk to yourself, what would you tell yourself then? What would you say? Crazy you say that because we're doing the whole 10 year challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So go, go back. Man. I would go back, man, I would probably, nah, I for sure would tell the younger me to really buckle down more mm -hmm. and, and know that if I grind now, mm -hmm. Hey, bro, straight up. Right now, ball right later. Right now, ball later, man. Really? Yeah. Shout out to Jim Kelly. Hey, man. <laughs> and uh, Jocelyn, yeah. yeah. But, hey, I, I would definitely go back and just say, hey, if this music thing is really what you want to do, like, push the gas mm -hmm. to the flow. Mm -hmm. I mean, right now, I'm in a position where I still have, you know, some time to really push it to the floor, but then... I've grown older, got more responsibilities, mm -hmm. about to be a husband. Mm -hmm. Things come up, you know, life right, happens. Right. But I still have what it takes to continue pushing, um, just adding more excelled rate. And I would tell the younger Lewis, be more brave. Okay. Be more brave, yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Um, what separates you and your businesses from everybody else in the industry that's doing what you do. Mm, okay. What separates me is the positive yep. side of I agree. my whole movement, my company, Positive Generation Entertainment. I started mm. that when I was in high school. Mm. Um, it started out as PG-18 because I wanted people to know, you know, we were kind of like the movie ratings. Mm -hmm. I didn't want people to have a negative connotation with, okay, you got PG-17 or PG-13, mm -hmm. but we were more on a adult mindset as far as business, and we were still young. Yeah. And so that was my whole movement. Um, PG-18, we dropped the 18, kept the PG, mm -hmm. and then I was like, we need a meaning and a purpose behind the P and the G. Mm -hmm. And we already had the logo. Um show you the logo <laughs> and we actually created the positive generation from that png because mm -hmm. we wanted everyone to know okay we do positive music we have positive messages but we love doing music yeah and we want to create a generational movement mm -hmm. to where kids are listening to music that can help them grow help right. them feel inspired um lyrical expression is something that i've taught for about seven months last year at Paul Monroe Teen Center. Okay. And so my business, even with DJing, I take that with me and let them know, okay, whenever you book me as a DJ, you'll get a positive atmosphere. You won't mm -hmm. have to worry about your kids hearing, you know, derogatory songs. Mm -hmm. If I feel like the song is inappropriate, even if it's being played on the radio, I'm not going to play it. You're at play the it. Event. Yeah. 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 And so I want everybody to feel comfortable. I want everybody to walk away with a good experience. I might throw it back with some old school mm -hmm. and then I might throw it back with the new school as well or just mix it in to where everyone is having a good time. Mm -hmm. um, I find myself being more of a very universal DJ yeah. and making sure that I don't put myself in the wrong niche. Mm -hmm. And so someone recently told me, you know, if you do 
schools mm -hmm. and community events, that's your lane. That is, Focus yeah. on your lane because ain't nobody else really in my area is mm -hmm. striving to do that. Right, right. And so that's where I really I know that most, most DJs want to do clubs. They want to do big venues mm -hmm. where... You know, it's a lot of people, whatever. But I noticed you'll do anything, yeah. And you and you do a lot of positive things, yeah, for the schools, community. Um, I noticed you did something uh, for somebody's job, banquet or whatever. Yeah, like, dude, that yeah. stuff is good because, like you said, a lot of those DJs that are at, at the club all night, they're not trying to do that. Exactly. You know, so exactly. really, you stay more busy and get more business that way. Mm -hmm. Plus, I can make it home before twelve a.m. That's good, man. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, so tell me uh, how you view failure. Like, what do you think about failure? Mm -hmm. And when things don't go right like you planned it to. Okay. Um, this brings me to one post that I recently made. And mm -hmm. it was a quote that was said on the radio. And it was like, today's quote is, winners. No, no, no. Let me start off. Losers fail. Mm -hmm. But winners no, okay, I'm messing it up. Okay, we're going to edit this. <laughs> nah, all right. So, losers quit. Yep. Right? Uh-huh. But winners fail uh -huh. until they succeed. Until they succeed. Yes. I, I knew that's what you was going to yeah, say. Yeah, exactly. Because they learn. Exactly. They learn from it. Yeah. Like, I'm going to fail X amount of times because I'm human. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yep. But the fact that you keep going and you like, okay, I'm going to learn from this failure. I'm going to learn from that failure. I'm going to learn from this failure. Is gonna make you succeed in the end because it's almost like you playing out all these different endings, mm -hmm. and it's like okay, if you get a chance to redo it, you're not taking the failure with you mm -hmm. as a crutch or like a burden. Right, right. You're you're taking it with you more of a learning experience, and you're applying what you learn from that failure and mm -hmm. applying it to help you succeed better. Okay. So I look at failure as a temporary obstacle and a temporary setback. Right. For a major comeback. Right. So, yeah. That's yeah, good. Man. Yeah. Um, what do you think is missing in the school system today as far as, like, teaching the youth and um, whether it be elementary school, middle school, high school, or college? What do you think mm -hmm. is missing in that element? Music, for one. Um, God. Mm -hmm. They took prayer out of, mm -hmm. the out of school. Yeah. And I would say character building. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like... They're so set on teaching students what's in the book mm -hmm. and trying to teach them by the book when the book should never exist. Right. Over in Japan, over in Asia. Right. They don't need it. Man, listen, they, they teaching them the basics. They come out smarter, I believe, because they're also teaching them, you know, character think, building. Yeah. And they're like, good. they're they're pushing, they're teaching the kids how to push themselves mm -hmm. more for not getting something right. Mm -hmm. If you ever seen a student training um, doing music and they're Asian or if they're mm -hmm. doing, you know, anything, they're actually harder on themselves mm -hmm. for failing because they don't want to let their dynasty down. Yep. They don't want to yep. let their ancestors down. Right. And it's like, what are we teaching our kids to hold them accountable mm -hmm. when they learn these things? I mean, kids nowadays talking back to the teachers mm -hmm. talking back to police. If we were teaching leadership and character building, even if we were just having the kids clean up after themselves, mm -hmm. In the classroom, I, I saw a picture online where after every day in school, the kids would clean up after mm -hmm. themselves. I mean, full on sweeping, moving the desk back, arranging the room, wiping everything down. Wow. And it's like, that's over in Asia. Why, mm -hmm. we, why we ain't on that? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, if you look at the school lunches, I feel like you need to bring real lunch back. <laughs> Real lunch. Real, real lunch. Yeah, real lunch back. That's what's missing in the schools too, man. Hey, because I like to eat. Yeah. I don't know who don't yeah. like to eat. Who don't like but <laughs> you got to start where the kids are in ingesting something that helps them feel better. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If they're eating crap, they're going to feel like crap. Therefore, right. you're going to get crap. All day. All and day. you can't, yeah. can't concentrate. You can't think um, good when you don't have... Uh, brain food. Mm -hmm. so you don't have foods that help you exactly. stay stay energized. Exactly. You know, so feet, why feet are they not health. teaching nutrition at an early age? Yeah. Health consciousness at an early age. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a lot that's missing in the schools today, man. And it's just crazy how and it shows. Yeah, it, it shows. shows. <laughs> it shows, and that's what's yeah. so mind blowing to me. It's like you can see 
the times are changing, but nothing's changing with the times. Nothing. Yeah. Makes no sense. Yeah. People are changing, times are changing, schools are staying the same. Staying the same. Makes no sense. No sense at all. Mm -hmm. I mean, next thing they're going to do, probably have an artificial intelligent robot teaching the kids. I yep. wouldn't be surprised, man. Yep. And I mean, the thing gonna probably just send out alerts to everybody's phone. <laughs> turn to this page. <laughs> hey, bro, I'm so serious. Yeah, it's crazy. Probably when everybody, you know, when technology gets that advanced, man, the movies you out of Because then, guess what? Yeah. You won't have to pay teachers. Exactly. You won't have to pay health insurance. You won't exactly. have to pay none of that. It's, it's definitely gonna happen. And a lot of like, companies are going to. Um, a lot of companies are going to more digital mm -hmm. right now. Even at Verizon, you know, they're going to digital. Yep. Everything don't online. even come in and see a see a yep. human anymore. I mean, you go pay your bill at a computer. Yep. Yeah. 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 Tell me this: How do you think we can make more entrepreneurs, dreamers, and uh, free thinkers, people mm. that people that can think for themselves, can be more artistic? Yeah. And things like that. I would say you gotta you gotta take the old mentality and the old methodologies mm. and not do away with them, but build from that mm -hmm. um giving the kids more empowerment through their everyday life mm -hmm. i would say is going to help tremendously it's really hard to to see what the future could be for the kids mm -hmm. if you bring back you know Bill Nye the Science Guy type yeah. stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That that kind of vibe. Like we used to have Magic School books. Yeah, you know I feel like we grew up on some better shows yeah, that were more yeah. more educational instead right. of just silly and fighting even, or stupid stuff. Yeah, it's like even then I was more inspired to be an astronaut because of Magic School Bus. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Watching different episodes on there, but then now you have the kids watching. Instagram, the shade room. Mm, oh yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they that's watching bad. negative that's stuff, bad. and it's just and like that's what they and that's what they soaking in. Man. Yeah, that's yeah. what they soaking sponges. in. Sponges. Yep, just like sponges. And I mean, to to really get a free thinker out of a child now, you have to give them the room to grow their mind and be a thinker mm, first. Absolutely. Because right now, all their thinking they're capable of is what they see. Okay. If they see their mom struggling from paycheck to paycheck, that's they don't right. see yeah. anything else beyond that. Right. They that's just true. see, hey, that's how, that's how they think it is. Exactly. Yeah. They think that's what it is. Exactly. And it's like, you have not because you know not. Not even because you ask not. If you don't know what to ask, how you going to know? So right. it's, it's just crazy. I mean, through music, you can only do so much. Mm -hmm. Um... Even through business, you can only do so much. And the businesses that exist now, like I'm doing, where I reach back for, okay, if I see a kid is interested in DJing, even at the schools that I DJ at, mm -hmm. they might come up to me and are bold enough to step behind the DJ booth. And mm -hmm. they're like, I want to see what you're doing. Yeah. And then I'm like, hey, this student is very interested in DJing. I wouldn't have to come and DJ here 10 years from now. We could actually groom him, train him mm -hmm. to be the next in line That's to right. be the DJ. I mean, business-wise, I want to become the Uber or the Airbnb of DJs. Wow. And That's have, dope. you know, a team that I could send out. And you know your school is going to have a great prom, a great homecoming because the kids have trained under me. And I'm definitely hard on implementing the positive mm -hmm. you know connotation with right. my business and my brand and it would kind of be like okay if you know when you go to mcdonald's you're gonna get the whopper the mm -hmm. same way mm -hmm. right yeah. or, or you're gonna get the big mac the my big bad. Mac. yeah you know hey I was, I was about to say that's burger king exactly right there, yeah yeah <laughs> but it's like nothing yeah. changes with the whopper no or the big go. mac no matter where you go so i want them to know okay no matter which DJ you get, mm -hmm. nothing's going to change because we're all going to be pulling from the same database of music mm -hmm. and it's all clean. It's all been very, basically audio approved yep. to be played at a crowd that has grandparents all the way to kids. Yeah. And so I want, age group. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so I want the kids to become more involved in the businesses reaching back. Mm -hmm. And if the businesses don't reach back, then how do they expect to groom up the next business leaders in line? Right. Yeah. Hey, well, last question for you, man. Mm -hmm. um, tell me how, tell the viewers, everybody, how you live to create yeah. and um, what you want to leave everybody with. Okay. 
I live to create because ain't nothing else to live for. If you just living and you're not creating, you're taking the gift that has been instilled in you by God mm -hmm. and you just throwing it in the trash. Right. I mean, if you're not living to create any kind of way of showing what talent you have, mm -hmm. you're doing yourself a disservice and you're doing God a disservice. You really have to live in a way that you can create and create a way for you to live and use that mm -hmm. as your tool, as your vessel, as your gift, as your platform. I mean, people take Instagram and they can abuse it or they can use it mm -hmm. to show what they've created. I mean, everybody's talented. You got some kind of gift, even if it's just communicating. Mm -hmm. You can use that gift and create something that somebody else needs to see mm -hmm. via YouTube or via Instagram and just make sure you use whatever you're creating. Just make sure you use that as something to inspire others. Right. Um, and I, I definitely want to leave all the viewers with knowing yourself and knowing your dreams have to come in a way that is not forced. Mm -hmm. um, you really have to Think and meditate on what you want to do and you don't mind waking up doing it every day. Yeah. And you can go with a smile on your face, do it, and let it make a way to show you how to make income from it rather than you forcing it and forcing yourself to do it to make income out of it. Mm -hmm. um, you got to take every day with a positive outlook, mm -hmm. be more optimistic, um, walk in faith. I would say walk in faith, and I even wrote a song called Just Do It. Mm -hmm. And so I want to leave everybody with one of the verses from the song. Um, it goes like this. Bow, wow, look at me now. Hot styles coming from the mind of someone so unique. And when I speak, ain't no other who could tell you better. Well, then I'll show you. I'm going to take a charge by setting the trend. The positive life is one that I spend. Hey, never give up on your dreams and destinies. I give my all, so my all is the best of me. Just do it, just do it, there ain't nothing to it. You gotta go through to say you went through it. You're coming this far, don't turn around. The same people pick you up, they'll put you down. Mm -hmm. Woo! Ain't life something that you gotta reach for hope because it's on the top shelf. Shelf esteem, I mean self esteem. It's like we living in a one man dream. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Nice, man. Appreciate it, man. Hey, thank Appreciate you for coming through. It. No problem. Uh, once again, y'all heard it here. I couldn't say it any better, man. Yeah. Uh, this has been the Live to Create Show, Jonathan Kelly, and the Entre Producer. DJ L. Smooth, Mr. Lewis Thirst, and all yes, that good stuff, man. Y'all subscribe. Y'all make oh, sure y'all subscribe. Subscribe, 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 share, comment, yes. like, yes. and we will see you on the next episode.